Throughout its clamorous history, the Green Mill Jazz Club has played a host to a number of famous celebrities. As you step in, you are instantly transported to a time when guys and dolls dressed in their finest suits and silky dresses to hear jazz. The Green Mill first opened in 1907 as Pop Morris's Roadhouse. By 1910, new owners had converted the Roadhouse into the Green Mill Gardens. Well, you know, back in the 19-teens, I guess, the 10s, you know, all the silent movies, a lot of them were made at s &A Studios down on uh, Argyle. So, Charlie Chaplin, Wallace Berry, all these uh, famous movie stars, they would hang out here and have a drink. So, you know, it's an old joint. Well, and I know, I bought it in a, like I got it April 15, 1986. It took six weeks to fix everything, reupholster, restore, redo the bar. When I was hanging out here before I bought it, it was real rough and torn up, and there was just like an old Detroit Junior playing behind the bar. There was no stage over there, you know, I built that. And I owned another joint already, so I kind of knew a lot of people, and I knew a lot of jazz people, so it was actually a big, big grand opening, and there was a mob scene in here. It was just packed, a great, great thing. And so the first, it was getting a little tough, but then in August, the Larry Card from the Tribune wrote it up, that it's a good joint and after that we started building up and then once people come in you have a good product they're going to want to come back and it's worked out ever since. The El Capone thing which everybody wants to always hear about is uh, he used to hang out here and he used to sit in this booth so he could see Joey Lewis and see both doors. Joey Lewis was a singer that was playing here in 1927. He tells Machine Gun Jack McGurn who owned the Green Mill or part of the Green Mill at the time who also worked for El Capone at the time that he was gonna quit. And Machine Gun Jack McGurn says, you can't quit, you have a lifetime contract. You know, he's one of these guys. So he quits and he goes to work at the Rendezvous Club. A week later, Machine Gun Jack McGurn goes to where he lived. Him and his guy slash his vocal cords, cut off part of his tongue, leave him there to die and the guy don't die. That's the Al Capone connection. Today, the Green Mill has the distinction of being the oldest continuously running jazz club in the country. Live music plays at the mill every night with acts ranging from jazz, blues, piano, big band orchestras, and swing bands.